Hello, everyone. My name is Frank Anthony, and welcome back to Let Me Be Frank. So this is episode 21 already. Only a couple more episodes, and then season two is already done. So um, we had some technical difficulties, but we made it today. <laughs> and I'm very proud to have another special guest on this week, and that is Alex Kack. How's it going, Alex? Hey, going great. I'm glad to be here. So We're also known... Virtually here. Virtually, yes. <laughs> also known as um, green... Is it green t-shirt guy? Just green shirt. Green it shirt. It was a polo, so... A polo, okay. <laughs> and we're going to get into that. I did wear a green shirt myself. I saw that, yeah. <laughs> to honor that. Um, but first off, if you could tell the audience just a little bit about who is Alex Kack, the way I like to word it is if you were a novel, what would the back of your book say? Oh, God. That'd be the most boring book anyone ever <laughs> read. Um... Alex Kack is a barely functional drunk who, by day, works in political organizing. Um, but, uh, no, that's um, cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alex Kack is a, an incredibly sour person for, push, for barely pushing 30. But, yeah, uh, that, so, so, something like that would be a clip of sound bites. It'd probably be like, it'd be five pull quotes from people that I dated about how disappointed they were of me. That's what the back of my ja like book jacket would read. <laughs> like he gained a lot of weight very quickly. I did not realize that that's what I was agreeing to. No, tr with COVID and everything, it's like ninety percent of us were gaining at least five ten pounds, and then there's that like very small percentage that are somehow even more in shape. It's just it's not fair i've been radically up and down during the uh, coronavirus pandemic oh, okay which has been uh like maybe a little concerning i don't know i bought a it scale might be. <laughs> in my life to try to keep track of it all and it's i'm like i'm doing every couple days now i'm like jotting it down in a journal and it's like wildly different i was like i uh from wednesday to friday i was down five pounds that doesn't seem healthy at all yeah, probably. I mean, I um, in past episodes, I kind of talk a little bit about it. I've suffered from an eating disorder. So back then, yeah, that was a good day. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's not. Yeah, no, that's definitely not normal. Um, with I don't remember Arizona's um, COVID stats, like how many, how many, do you know around how many cases they've had? Yeah, much like my weight, it's been real up and down. <laughs> um, <laughs> So uh, it was pretty mild in the first couple months, which uh, gave our like idiotic governor a real false sense of security, I think. And so they reopened really quick, despite the fact that like every health expert was like, maybe that's not a good idea. And I should like actually I should backtrack on that. I'm about to get angry for a second. Uh -oh. the, <laughs> the governor knew it was a bad idea. Because he came out and he said that the very earliest we're going to open by X date, based on where the numbers are at right now. And then these, like, crazy people, these, like, crazy, like, anti-mask nut jobs, including one of the people that was in that viral video of, that I was in, filed, like, a recall petition on him to, like, try to remove him from office. And like four days later or a week later or whatever, he was like, never mind that d that date I said before, even though the numbers haven't changed at all, we're just going to reopen right now. Oh, wow. And, uh, and when we became the global hotspot, we were the worst, not just in the U.S., but we wound up being the worst in the world, I think, outside of Brazil. So, um, yeah, it got like, we, we, we could have been like coasting real good down here. And then it was just like, a hellish nightmare through the entire summer it's like uh, why it's like why fix something that's not broken <laughs> yeah like we were we could have been like god it's like one of those things like, it's like you want like, i had almost forgotten about it because the monotony of the coronavirus pandemic just makes it like there's just so much like bad news going on and you're doing oh, this yeah. at the same time you're doing the same exact thing every day. So it's like you just lose track of this stuff 
you know, like you hear it, you're mad about it for like two days and you forget about it until like right now I get asked a question like that. And I start trying to remember the like graph of coronavirus deaths in Arizona. And I'm like, actually, that kind of sucked. <laughs> it's yeah. I mean, I probably like an hour or two ago, I remembered it was Saturday. Like it's just it's been crazy. Like it's <laughs> it's been interesting keeping track of everything. Yeah. Uh, last night I was laying in bed and I couldn't sleep and I was trying to think about what I needed to wake up and do today. Mm. And I was positive that yesterday was Saturday, <laughs> which makes no sense. Like given my work schedule and, and everything else, like it yeah. made absolutely no sense at the time, but it made perfect sense in my like 1am brain to be laying there paranoid thinking I had forgotten like three appointments including yours <laughs> i was gonna say yeah this almost didn't happen so <laughs> it's good we both figured out what we're supposed to do today <laughs> so so yeah so when um when we first talked and you were telling me about how you went viral and stuff and i was like oh that's really cool and i didn't and then I was looking into it. And I was like, I didn't even remember this. <laughs> I, I sometimes I live under a rock. Like, for example, the president, I don't know, like I could be going somewhere. He could be staying right next to me and I don't even notice. Like, <laughs> I, I definitely live under a rock sometimes. So I completely missed the story, unfortunately. But then when I actually watched the clip, I was like, this is this is very interesting. <laughs> and I can't wait to dig more into it. It happened about a year ago. Was it um, in August? Yeah, it was August of last year. Okay, so, yeah, for people who may have missed that story, how how did you become viral? What um, what happened? What exactly happened there? I mean, uh, Tucson happened. Uh, <laughs> this, I like to say it's a really good kind of snapshot of what living in Tucson, Arizona is like, is kind of in that video. Because pe people kept, like, commenting when it first went viral, and they were like, this is like Parks and Rec. This is like Pawnee. And I'm like, yeah, it's like... Kind of accurate, actually, if you were to come here. But so I was at a city council meeting. Um, I was working on a campaign at the time that would have allowed the voters to decide uh, if they wanted to pass sanctuary city uh, protocols for policing. And um, some protesters from this far right group uh, based in Phoenix, which is a couple hours away, like drove down to like protest it. But they also had, like, no idea what was going on or, like, what they were talking about. Like, they didn't seem to get that this was, like, something that, like, the voters were going to vote on in November. And they thought that, like, that city council meeting, like, a, the mayor and city council was, like, making this happen illegally at this city council meeting. Well, sorry to interrupt one second, because I when I did some digging, I noticed they recorded a lot of things, too, that day. And they were they were like interviewing everyone outside. <laughs> I was like, what yeah. is going on? <laughs> they are. So, I mean, they, that's like there's like such an interesting whole story to like that lady, Jen, and like yeah. her wife and group, because, God, uh, I don't know if I should finish like what happened that day or just like get into her because like sorry. everything about her is just sorry ridiculous yeah you can entertaining well um we'll finish the story and then we can <laughs> we can get into jen <laughs> um so jen and one of her friends are part of this like far right group they're actually like labeled a hate group by the southern poverty law center and uh and so they showed up and they're, like, screaming at the mayor. They're, like, screaming at the city council. They're, like, screaming at the people there. And it's just, like, ridiculous, too. Because, like, they brought in, like, these protest signs. But then, like, the one yeah. guy was, like, holding his upside down. Oh, and he's gosh. got, like, a 44-ounce Big Gulp soda that he, like, keeps, like, almost spilling while he's, like, trying to, like, maneuver his giant sign and, like, yell, like, at people. And it was just, I mean, it's just ridiculous. And they had, like, they had no idea what they're talking about, like, in any regard. I mean, like, they're screaming stuff about the Constitution that, like, isn't true. They're, like, screaming at the mayor who, like, is against this whole campaign. And they're, like, screaming at him thinking he's, like, the person behind it. And, like, <laughs> just none of it made any sense. 
And so, yeah, so I was, like, sitting in the row right in front of them. And everyone else who was, like, around just, like, got the hell out of Dodge because that's nuts and you don't want to, like, be near it. And um, I didn't because, like, that's the best thing you're going to see all day. Uh, also, like, there's a bunch of cops in that building and you know they're coming. So I just, like, sat there and watched them uh, be crazy. And I laughed at them because it was hilarious. It also just so happened that the local news crew that was there, the reporter had, like, just put in his two weeks, so he did not care. And he, like, just grabbed the camera from the cram- camera dude and, like, zoomed in on my face while uh, I was laughing. Okay, that kind of, Okay, that makes a little bit more sense, yeah. Yeah, so it was, like, the perfect storm of things happening. And, like, that whole meeting was, like, a lot. There was, like, two, like, uh, older women who were activists in the community who, like, sang a folk song, like, in support of, like, this campaign. And then there's also, like... The city of Tucson was, like, jumping on this, like, nuclear disarmament, like, agreement that all these cities across the world were a part of at that same meeting. So, like, there's this uh, local man, Ted Warmbrand, who's an older, like, folk musician who was, like, playing banjo and, like, playing a song to, like, commemorate that event that was happening. And so, like, just this, like, super cut of this, like, meeting goes from, like older people like singing folk songs to like an entire room of people like screaming nonsense at each other (laughs) i wish uh, i wish our council meetings were this interesting (laughs) i need i need that that life in my life (laughs) that's I, i i told people this a bunch of times afterwards like that's not even really the most ridiculous tucson city council meeting i think i've ever been to I remember, like, a decade ago, like, probably, it was two mayors ago, it was Mayor Bob Walcup at the time, uh, which means nothing to you or probably any of your listeners, but I want to give, uh, you know, let's, <laughs> Never let's know. remember yeah. the old guy. Uh, but he, um, it was when he was mayor, I went to this city council meeting, like, 2010, probably, or something like that, and there was, like, during the call to the audience, there was, like, some lady who took the opportunity to, like, read from her, like, super graphic erotic novel. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, that was probably... That would be me in the meeting, probably. <laughs> yeah, like, it was 50 times crazier. I mean, it was, like, graphic, too, you know? I mean, this was, like, this was not, like, 50 shades you can pick it up at Walmart. I mean, this was, like graphic i'm positive the word moist was in there at some point too which just like makes your skin crawl when you hear it in a sexual context well um i never really read like yale james 50 shades but the word um oh my god she made me hate the word murmur by how many times she used it like murmur is my new moist (laughs) oh god or it's those words are just awful it's probably it's it's the m word probably (laughs) it's just not like good you know yeah there's like it's definitely not like a good word no one's happy about that (laughs) so um so yeah normally i don't normally names aren't said too often on this show but we already said her name at least just the first name we don't need to like start telling like where she lives and her last name and all that (laughs) all that stuff but yeah tell me i guess a little bit about jen because you said she's a whole She's a whole thing of her own. <laughs> She's a whole thing of her own. Um, so here, the thing with Jen is just like everything involving her is kind of nutty. And like, yeah, I mean, you use her name because she like she puts her name out there. She, like it's in the news. You know, if you Google it, if you Google that event, you'll find her name pretty quickly. Okay. And the follow up was like incredible. So, like, the whole thing happens. I'm doing this, like, series of interviews. So she's part of this. She's the head of this group called the AZ Patriots. But she used to be part of this other group called the Patriot Movement Arizona. And so during one of the interviews, I, like, I had said the the old group's name, which is, like, also, like, a hate group. And the, like, official Twitter account for that group, was, like, came out, was just, like, was, like, we don't have anything to do with her anymore. Like, don't, don't put that on us. Oh, they separated them. That's interesting. Yeah. Jeez. 
um, they like excommunicated her. They were like, look, we wow. ca- we carry guns everywhere we go and like also don't like brown people, but like she's on some whole other situation. Um, but yeah, I mean, like everything with her is always, she's always like pulling these like stunts and like filming them and putting them mm-hmm. online. And there was like a saga like revolving around her that like unfolded in like the months after that where like she uh like that video happened and she like became kind of a laughing stock um like worldwide and it was just like amazing like the t te- like there's so many parts of like the t-shirt that she was wearing like the company that made that t-shirt reached out to me to, like, ask if, like, I would take a photo wearing one of their t-shirts to, like, balance the negative imagery out. Wow. <laughs> having bought one of their shirts and just wearing it in the video. Oh, wow, that's crazy. <laughs> and, Holy crap. Um, she got arrested. So she, be- oh, she got appointed to be, like, a precinct committee woman for the Phoenix Republican Party. And then, like, a week later, she got arrested for identity theft and fraud (laughs) because she, like, stole an old woman's, like, credit card reward points to, like, get a hotel room and buy concert tickets in California to see (laughs) corn. Like, I mean, wow, I didn't think, wow, I didn't think this interview (laughs) would get, would go this direction. But, I mean, let's keep going. (laughs) <laughs> personally i used to be a fan of corn too <laughs> i mean who is it who is it but like the idea of in 2019 needing to go see them so badly that you <laughs> like, super, like you impersonate being like an 80 year old woman and charge it to her car oh like that's a like that's clearly the the 80 year old single woman demographic is actually i think a huge base of corn's fan base that's who buys most of their concert tickets like you know (laughs) um she got arrested she got released uh in the news because it was like such a low dollar amount that i guess the count like the county attorney didn't even feel like moving forward with a felony charge on it (laughs) like that's like their official statement was just like this isn't worth it basically and then, yeah, she kept popping up in the news. Like, after that, she, like, bear-maced protesters this, like, this last summer in Phoenix and, like, was, like, going to, like, the anti-police brutality, like, BLM protests, like, carrying weapons and, like, picking fights with people and just, like... Wow. She's really good at, like, getting herself... I will say this. Like, she is really, really good at, like, getting herself in the news. Hmm. And, like, it's, you know, you, I, you can't take that away from her, I guess. Her, like, her, like, adult daughter came out, and, like, that was a whole news story. Like, her adult daughter got on the internet and, like, started flaming her about, like, being, like, basically a con artist who's just, like, does this crazy stuff and films it so that she can, like, continue to, like, make the local papers. Wow. That's, yeah. holy crap. I just uh, I just happened to be along for the ride one of these times, the biggest time. <laughs> so yeah, have you um, have you ever had to run? Have you seen her ever since? Like, have you ever had to interact again or have a <laughs> another meeting? <laughs> Not in person. Like, oh, okay. Luckily, so I, I mean, I don't go to Phoenix a ton. She doesn't come to Tucson a ton. Oh, okay. Know, the rival cities. But, um, I mean, she, she came at me on Twitter a couple of times, <laughs> which is just like, like, she would just, like, pop into, like, Twitter threads that, like, I had going to, like, you know, just, like, pick a fight. I don't know, I guess, like, I mean, she, like, she loves the, like, public confrontation of it all. Like, that's her, her shtick. That yeah, I mean that's what it seems like. There's oh god, there's so many people like that. They are like it's always like look at me or like no um negative press is better than no press type people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean that's exactly it. You know, it's like uh it's like that, yeah, the the god. That's not for me. Like I've enjoyed my whole ride of like morality. Yeah. 
and all that, but like I'm so glad it was like for something like as stupid as like the fact that I have like a big laugh <laughs> as opposed to like it could have been like something else so embarrassing. I do so many embarrassing things like <laughs> throughout the course of every day. Like I'm very clumsy. I, I dance in public a lot and like not in like appropriate places, like not at like a nightclub, but like in a target betting. <laughs> so like there's like a lot worse things that like I could have wound up on the internet getting recycled. Oh, definitely. There um I mean good thing with memes and stuff, at least for good thing at least for the people who are in more embarrassing situations is they do die off eventually and then like something else comes up because i do think about old ones like that girl who smiles really creepily and she's like the crazy ex-girlfriend she was just forever known as that and like that must suck like that's why yeah you definitely got off the hook with, <laughs> <laughs> with not like something where you're like oh you're like the bedwetter you <laughs> like, you, like, she, like something really awful <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely um, but, uh, there, she came up in my like my YouTube feed the other day. Like they just had her on like I don't remember. Wait, crazy ex girlfriend or Jen? No, the the like uh, the overly attached ex girlfriend. They're overly attached. Yeah, yeah. They um, she was like it was like Vice or Vox or one of those like you know, brought her out of like retirement to like talk about it again. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go check that out after. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, it's like there's a there's a weird life cycle of these things where it's like you have like a year of like attention, mm-hmm. and then it dies out, and then I think it's it's like it's like graduating high school. You know, it's like you have a five, a ten, and a fifteen year reunion. And uh, they did that. They did that that bad luck Brian kid too, where it's like ten years after his meme, yeah, became a thing. Like Burger King gave him a spokesman deal. <laughs> um. That's awesome. I'm looking. I'm looking forward to in ten years, uh, being, <laughs> being the back. face of like I don't know, hot dog on a stick or something. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm I'm 28 right now, and I know in a couple of years, I'm. I always tell. I don't know. I always think about like turning 30 and how that's like the beginning of like death. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, thanks, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm just I'm saying, staring, like, I'm staring down the barrel of that gun right now. I'm, say, so. I'm just, I'm just saying, I can relate that we are starting to um, deteriorate a little. Bit. <laughs> yeah, it is but a, the like end of your 20s is an interesting moment of reflection on. Oh yeah. Because, like, all of your 20s is, like, this... It feels like the world is kind of open. You have these possibilities, and you can, like, go make something of yourself. Yeah. And then, yeah, no, at, like, 30, it's just, like, eh, maybe that's not going to work out. You should, uh... should should get a teaching certificate, you know? <laughs> like, that's... That sounds specific, but it's because uh, that's what I spent this morning doing. <laughs> Look up the requirements in Arizona. We um we are going to take a quick commercial break, so we will be right back. And we are back. So before getting back into, we kind of derailed a little bit before getting back into the questions I had set up. Um, Alex was definitely telling me some good stuff on break <laughs> about like related to um CNN and just like you know when this whole viral thing first happens, all the big news stations. Um, want to pick up the story. They want to get the story out first and this and that. But there was definitely some interesting behind the scenes stuff that I was curious if Alex would talk about on the show. And he said, yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. Um, tell us about that. Like what we were just talking about. Yeah. So, um, so like, you know, the first, God, we talked about a lot. Uh, uh, we did. <laughs> the, the, the first few days of the, of, of like going viral and like, uh, especially to that level, um, it, it's, it's nuts. Uh, I think I was sleeping like a couple hours a day tops because you're getting all these interview offers and then you're also getting like, I was getting op-ed offers, like the chance to like write my story, um, which really just means like writing the same article like seven times, but with like slightly different words. Um, but so like my, my, my daily schedule was like, started at like 3 30 a.m basically like every day 
and I'd wake up, like, shave and, like, comb my hair and, like, try to get camera ready wearing that same freaking shirt to do, like, my first interview. Because I was doing, like, different time zones. I was doing different countries. So it was it was just was, nuts. Was that the only shirt you had like that, too? <laughs> or do you and have the, multiple green polos? <laughs> I So I actually, I do now because the Penguin, <laughs> original Penguin, the company that that shirt was, sold out after that video of that shirt of like of that color shirt like it sold out wow. on their web store it sold out on amazon and it sold out uh in in stores at nordstrom and online that's crazy like all in like 24 hours <laughs> and uh so they sent me like and this was like not cheap shirts They're like 70 bucks a pop retail um so they sent me like this giant box of like clothes and it was like, yeah, they sent me like five or six polo shirts. They sent me like, I just like almost all of them were green and just like, but different shades of green. And they sent me like one blue and one white one, just to, like <laughs> spice it up. Um, they sent me some green t-shirts. They sent me some pairs of shorts, like a couple pairs of slacks. Like, I mean, they like, it was like a thousand dollars and like, nice clothes just delivered to my doorstep yeah, um, I wish. <laughs> yeah it was incredible um but but yeah so i mean that was also part of it was that so i'm more but i'm wearing the same shirt every day for these interviews and um you know you get getting camera ready and it was like they, they took like a weird life cycle because like the first couple big ones like cnn like jumped Pretty quickly. I think they were like the third, like, kind of bigger national news outlet I heard from that, like, the morning of. That kind of makes uh, sense, too, because they are more on the left. Yeah. Oh. And the, th- the thing is, though, is, like, the other, some of the others that had taken it, who, like, like, were kind of almost, like, trying to dig in for, like, the deeper story. And, like, CNN has, like, a person who does like fluff segments, like feel good stories, you know, yeah. the funny things. And like they threw it to that person, which makes total sense. You know, like that's it, it's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous video. But um it like didn't go well between her and I. We did like almost a 40 minute interview. And at the time, a lot of people on the internet were watching that video and they were like flaming jen the woman i'm laughing at in that video but like which like yeah because she's absurd but they were like a lot of people were directing it at like her body and they were like slut shaming her because of how she was dressed and like talking about like literally like her body and like how she looked and like just like all this stuff that's like super like i don't know it's like honestly it's like gross and kind of sexist and like just not like yeah, it's that's- yeah, like she doesn't have the best fashion sense for sure, but like, you but you know. do kind, of, you do it. Kind of does make you think about if she was um, younger and skinnier and this and that, and like more appealing to what society considers attractive. Like you wonder, like yeah, if people would really even comment on, like they wouldn't be sending comments like that. But they, yeah, exactly, exactly. And like the thing that it was like nuts about it too is like she's not actually overweight <laughs> like and people were like throwing those comments at us when you talk about like the like kind of gross nature of how we like body shame people oh yeah like like let's be fully honest like i'm chubbier than she is but because of like the political dynamics of the video like i have a bunch of people in my twitter mentions like sexualizing me and talking about how hot i am and a bunch of people like talking about how unattractive she is wow which is like not the point but that's like kind of where that first cnn interview like the person wanted to take it because they were going for like you know they're going on this like light-hearted kind of joke vibe and that was one of the narratives going on but they like wanted me to like make a dig about it you know like make fun of her hoochie shorts and whatever and i'm just like not about it like that's not something I'm going to say. And we, like, kind of got into it. Me and this, like, CNN anchor. <laughs> and, like, the producer had to, like, kind of redirect us to and, like, finish it up. And it was just, like, it didn't end in a way that felt super amicable. And I was, like, 
pretty nervous about how it was going to look when it aired. And yeah, I think they used like, we did like almost a 40 minute interview. They used like maybe a 30, 40 second clip of me talking total. And the rest was like, she read things that I said to her during the interview and like just kind of, you know, cut things off and stuff like that. But it was like, yeah, well, it didn't end in the most like amicable place between us. And then it, it like the whole narrative of it got interesting because like, they looked at it just as, like, this funny video. But a lot of the other, like, news agencies, like, realized that, like, I work in politics by day. And they, like, actually started digging in. And, like, made it more of, like, a bigger story about the campaign itself and the issues surrounding yeah. it. Which was really good. And that's, frankly, kind of what I, I... That's, like, your hope and dream of what something like that turns out to be. And even, like, like MTV. Like, I did MTV News. And, like, they... The person that did my interview for MTV was, like, someone I matched with on Tinder, like, <laughs> many years prior. <laughs> and, and even that interview, in that context, was, like, more brass tacks, like, let's talk about, like, what's seriously going on. That's wild. <laughs> than the CNN one was. And so it, it created a weird narrative. So then CNN came back to me, like, the end of that week and was like, hey, would you, like, write something that's, like, from a more serious lens about this for us? And then I did. And I was like, cool. Like, I'm kind of glad that I'm getting this, like, second chance with CNN. Because the first one was, like, it wasn't, the wor- it wasn't a bad experience. But, like, it wasn't, of all the many interviews I did in that week, it was definitely... <laughs> kind of at the bottom of my, like, personal favorite list. Yeah. Um, and then it was, like, still kind of a... Still kind of a mess, honestly, dealing with them on that. Because they had, like, issues with, like, language I used. Not, like, swearing, but, like... I, like, recognized that she was part of... I didn't even say hate group, but I said, like, far-right group. And they, like, were like, we can't verify that. Like, our fact-checkers haven't been able to find that. And I wind up talking to the fact-checker, and it's like an 18-year-old, 19-year-old intern or something like that, you know, who I had to, like, walk him through just, like, Googling her name, basically. It was just, like, this is so much of a headache compared to, like, every other news station I've worked with in this process so far. Wow, yeah. I... It's probably because, I don't know, like, CNN and Fox, they're so... They're always battling it out and, like... I don't, maybe it just has to do stuff with that so they don't like, they gotta really like cross the T's and dot the I's so that Fox doesn't call them on something really like minuscule and like vice versa. I don't know. It's oh, totally. Yeah. T- totally. I mean, that's totally what it is. And it's also like, it's also, I think, the nature of like commercial news in 2020. Like, this isn't yeah. even like really, frankly, a, a dig at them in a lot of ways. It is so, I mean, because it, it, it has to be revenue generating. And in general, all news media is bleeding money. Like, the, the new nature of how the internet has changed. Oh, yeah. It, there's so much competition in that marketplace. There are so many people making money by just recycling what, like, local journalists are finding out. So it's, it's I don't honestly blame them. Like, they're making budget cuts in departments, frankly. There's no doubt about that. And at the same time... They're also, yeah, they're stuck in this kind of, like, partisan war where, like, they didn't necessarily used to be a part of. They used to be more of just, like, a straight news agency. And now it's more just, like, this endless series of talking heads discussing tweets. And then everyone complains about it. But at the end of the day, the reason they're doing that is because those same people that are complaining about it are watching it. And it's putting eyeballs on ads. And that's how they're staying afloat. So, you know, it, that definitely that makes me think of how um, <laughs> that just made me think of probably not the best example, but just a funny example I thought of where people will say, oh, like, I hate drama in my life and negativity. And then they go and watch reality TV <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and like and they're like, oh, what's the gossip? <laughs> well, yeah, so, I mean, it's like it's like the classic thing about like, you have a friend that's like, I hate drama and they're like. 10 minutes later they like pick a fight with their significant <laughs> other because like 
you know, of a typo in a text message or something, you know? And they're like, what did you mean by that? But, yeah, with this show, I... Politics haven't really come up too much. This will probably be one of the most that it does. Um, I... When it comes to the show, I like to try to be as center as possible. Like, I... But at the same time, whoever the guest is, I feel like they have that right to express their... Um, voice and their beliefs on the show whether i agree or not with them i just try to yeah kind of stay in the middle with it try to understand maybe where they're coming from especially if i don't agree <laughs> with them because then i'm then i'm really curious like wow like how <laughs> how we think so differently <laughs> yeah well i mean that's that makes you a good inter interviewer oh thank you but um yeah, and I and the whole thing with Jen and stuff too. I mean, she um did she just kind of sounded a little bit more on the on the extreme conservative side. Um, I I don't know where I was gonna go with that, but <laughs> but I do feel like you know you have like you have your Democrats, your Republicans, but then you do have like very extreme people on each side. Not I don't feel like too too many because I feel like the majority of us are you know, decent people, we kind of think before we speak type people, but then, yeah, you do have the ones that kind of um, make a certain group look really, really bad. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, you can't even really call that stuff conservative, honestly, right? I mean, the whole yeah. the whole idea of, like, conservative as it meant in, like, the modern American context, it's supposed to be, like, or at least the context of a few decades ago, is this kind of idea of, like, we're in agreement that there needs to be progress, but we, like, want to protect the status quo to some extent and, like, make sure that things don't, like, radically spin out without any safeguard. Yeah. You know? And that's, like, a, it's just a really very, very moderate, like, let's do this in the slowest possible way. Like, in theory, that's what it's supposed to be, right? Yeah. When you're talking about someone who's actively, like, let's flip... Like, let's flip backwards. Let's go backwards. Like, that's not conservative. That's just regressive, you know? Um, and especially when they're, like, that loud about it. Like, that's a level of, like... You know, it, at some point, I mean, there's, like, that's not coming from, like, this kind of a standard political discourse. That's just something else is going on. Yeah. No, I think... And I think that's really... I think that is really important, too say um because yeah. just a lot politics in general it's just not as it's not as black and white as <laughs> it's made out to be sometimes there's a lot of gray with it so and i'm yeah. not even i'm personally i'm not a big like political person but i just like i even know that that you know the media can say this or that but it's like there's yeah i mean there's just more to the story with a lot of those things oh yeah i mean absolutely and you're never really gonna know these people i mean <laughs> I have, like, pictures of, like, all these, like, historical figures on my wall, but, like, yeah, I'm, like, I'm a nerd who loves history. That's, I think, slightly different than the way that people get sometimes about, like, the contemporary, like, leaders and movements where they, like, it's like they base their identity, like, so in unison with what these mm. people are saying. Yes, and it's, yeah. it's, that's sketchy. Like as a as a way to live your life, and it doesn't really matter. I think where your ideology is, you know, left, right, center, whatever. The second you're like sandwiching yourself and molding yourself to a figure you've never met, it's not. It's not like you're learning from them. It's not like they're teaching something or saying something that's making you reevaluate or think. You're just like trying to lockstep with this like charismatic figure. In this like weird, almost like parasocial celebrity worship dynamic, like yeah. that's dangerous, frankly. Oh yeah. Um, for, like for the nation, but also like for you as a person, and like your family, and like the way you live your life, and the decisions that you make, like with your money, and like everything. It's bad. It's bad news. No, but and like you said, they um, they know that, and they yeah, and they well, when I say they, like people in the media and certain politicians and all that like they know that and they use that and yeah and they keep winning <laughs> yeah. it's, but um yeah but we 
we definitely we took a lot of turns <laughs> from the, from where I I definitely want to focus it more back on you. <laughs> we really like went down a spiral, um, but that's okay. Um, but I also I don't want to take. I know you have other interviews and other things to do too, so I just want to make sure time wise we're okay with that. So just let me know when you got to bounce. <laughs> yeah, I, I can give you I can give you like another ten. Let's Perfect. Do it. Let's, let's lightning round some personal info about me. Okay. So yeah, we'll go. We'll try to do this in ten minutes. So, <laughs> how has your life changed since becoming Green Shirt Guy? And yeah, and what is going on currently in your life since it's been a year later? Oh man, uh, what's going on in my life is an easier thing to answer because nothing, okay. nothing, nothing's going <laughs> on in anyone's life. You know, I mean, if if you're you know smart, I guess. <laughs> Um, cause, uh, there are germs in the air that will kill you, um, or will kill your, uh, elderly family members. Um, no, I mean, not elderly family members in my life. So I, uh, moved back to Arizona and became a caretaker for my mother. Um, so last year, still doing that. Uh, she is disabled and navig and older. And so navigating that with the pandemic um and balancing that out with working full time that's probably my entire life on a day to day basis um and so it's weird i guess if you went back to like february january there was much more of like uh how my life has changed related to going viral um aspect because like i would go out in public and get recognized and blah blah yeah. blah, blah that isn't happening so much because like a big day out for me is like going to the doctor or like getting my car washed, you know, yeah. at like one of the automatic ones where I don't have to touch anything or anybody. Um, so, so that's, it's a little different. Um, I will say, I mean, you know, obviously I like amassed a sizable following on social media. I saw um, you up on Twitter, especially. Yeah. So, um, that's like gone up and down quite a bit over time. Uh, it's been interesting how that's changed because I think I peaked at like up over 75,000 followers on Twitter. And then I went down into the 40s again as I would like say things that would like piss people off or they would like. Oh, disagree. I can relate. <laughs> yeah. And then and then I've, I've been like kind of hovering in like the mid 50s for a while it like goes up and down and balances out but it's like i've had like a couple of other weird moments on the internet since then uh, that like, uh i guess i'd be remiss if i didn't mention this stupid movie poll um so when the pandemic first set in and like the ever big shutdown happened i like i still have a bunch of dvds and i said like that's what i was gonna start doing for like entertainment and i like Honestly, legitimately just couldn't make up my mind between two movies. And I'm like, I'm going to put this on Twitter. We'll, we'll let the fine denizens of the internet decide. And so I, like, I made a poll and I was like, which one of these two movies should I watch? And if one of them was something and the other was Monkey Bone. And people had like an insanely adverse reaction to the fact that like I own 2001 Brendan Fraser, Chris Kattan, Monkey Bone on DVD. Like people were just irate upset about this fact. <laughs> And so, like, the next day, I was like, well, I'm going to do that again, because that was kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I picked a different DVD, and I put it up against Monkey Bone. And we're talking about, like, just hundreds of people voting in this thing. And as to keep doing this, and it, it becomes, like, thousands of people every night voting in these polls. Well, that's cool. And, like, getting really emotionally invested on each side of it. And, uh... Like, Monkey Bone was losing every night, but it was getting closer. <laughs> and, like, I mean, like, they, there was, like, hashtags built around it. And, like, people picked sides. And, like, it was, like, two teams. And, like, there was, like, no set rules or, like, time to this or anything. It was just, like, kind of at the same time every night, roughly. I was getting done with work. And then I would, like, start dinner and pick a movie. Yeah. And, like, do the poll. But it would be, like, that was normally somewhere around, like, 7 p.m. And it would be, like, 6.45. I would have, like, mentions and, like, DMs and stuff from, like, random people I have never met or interact with being, like, did I miss the poll tonight? Are you doing the poll tonight? <laughs> it went on for, like, a couple weeks. 
and it just kept building and getting bigger like every day. And people were like getting so like aggressive and like sometimes mean spirited with each other about it. Um, I think that's been my favorite part of all of it, honestly, because it was just so absurd to like be a part of and watch. There was like, I think one of my favorite things, there's so many people who like started following me, they had no idea about that viral video, or they did and didn't realize I was the same person, but they started following me because of those stupid movie polls <laughs> and Monkey Bone. <laughs> and like, it was like my favorite comment was like a screenshot of like this text message that was like, I have no idea what's going on here, but my friend just texted me and told me to, like, come vote in this to vote against Monkey Bone. <laughs> <laughs> like, she, like, shows this text thread of her friend explaining it. And there's, like, a quote in there that's like, yeah, and then this pro-Monkey Bone contingent just rallied 15 minutes ago. <laughs> Poor monkey bone. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was like people were like actively like campaigning and like getting there. I mean, it was like, God, I wish we had that for actual elections. <laughs> people were like texting yeah, all of their friends to be like, vote, <laughs> go vote. No, I think the last time I got, I know the last time I think I got that aggressive about voting was like American Idol. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how people get it's so weird. Like, People don't even going a little kind of going back into politics. It's like, you know, you are like, oh, like I'm, you know, it'll be like, oh, I'm voting for this person or like you should vote for this candidate. And then people are like, but no, really, like, who's that masked singer or some shit? Yeah. <laughs> like, they just care so much more about like all that stuff. It's crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's like escapism, you know, and it's actually that I think that's important for people to like deal with how bullshit the rest of life can be you know yeah. entertainment's important man it really is that's i mean that's the whole basis of sports right like that's why we're sports fans is there's like i think a s portion of people that are like actually really like enjoy the like mechanics of each sport and there's like far more people who like having something to be invested in that is low stakes compared to my mortgage is too much. My hours are getting cut. You know, we may go to World War Three tomorrow. Like, this just, it's, humans need that, like, psychological, we need entertainment. Entertainment's yeah. important. It helps us make sense of everything else. I do give um, the, polit <laughs> the politicians and the candidates credit that they um those debates oh my god those have become very entertaining <laughs> over oh. the past couple elections <laughs> i'm like wow like the things they say to each other it's oh my god oh yeah they've taken so many cues from sports and reality yeah. tv and professional wrestling <laughs> <laughs> seriously <laughs> um Okay, yeah, I wanted to just mention quickly, uh, actually, before I mention quickly, can you just share your um, social media links so people that are listening, they can follow you? Yeah, uh, I was blessed with a goofy sounding last name. Uh, so it's just Alex Cack at everything. It's either just okay. Alex Cack or Alex underscore Cack. Um, and you just Google, just Google it, it'll pop up, you'll find stuff. I was like, you were viral. Yeah, you're coming. <laughs> You'll be up there. <laughs> There's like three other Alex Cacks in the entire world, and they all have like a slightly different spelling. They have like an umlaut or like a U somewhere. Yeah, just look for the um, the monkey bone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and I just want to mention quickly. I noticed you have um you have a website, bullmoosereview.com, right? Yeah, yeah. So I have a few blogs. Um, okay. That's like. The one I normally attach the stuff, even though I don't really update it super often. But it's where, like, that website is where I post all of my, like, lefty political screeds um, whenever I have an extra 30 minutes to, like, type one out and run it through Grammarly. Um, but I also have some newsletters I'm launching soon. Um, so I have a Patreon. And uh, if, you, if you sign up at any tier on Patreon, you'll be a part of my new 
my new newsletter, which is just oh. going to be me making fun of things in the news once a week. Um, <laughs> so same as everything else, just find Alex Cack and yeah, and you also, I mean, you get other stuff. I think if you subscribe. Um, the bottom tier is like two bucks or something like that. And it just gives you like access to like the newsletter, which is that newsletter is only there um, and only going to be on Patreon. But, um, but if you do need to hire tiers, like I'll hand write like a letter to you, you'll get stickers with my face on it, uh, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, I saw, yeah, I saw the postcard. <laughs> yeah. I have, I have a red bubble store that has like some ridiculous merch on it. Um, you, there's a, a great drawing of me laughing in the green shirt as a Lotharea card that this local artist here did. Um, but there's also some other stuff. There's like logos for my different projects and like blogs and podcasts and newsletters. You can buy that stuff there. You can also, um, there's like a, a ridiculous thirst trappy photo of me, <laughs> also, like, but also from when I was a little heavier. Uh, that like that photo had its own online moment back in like January or February where like people were making fan art of it and like making it their like phone wallpaper and like laptop like wallpaper and so like I I put it on like a bunch of t-shirts and phone cases and stuff <laughs> uh, you can get you can get like yoga pants and leggings with that photo <laughs> like as an all over print on it <laughs> <laughs> um, which people have like done like purchased and posted pictures of which is just like utterly absurd it makes me laugh so much that's still amazing think about. but yeah so i've got all kinds of stuff for sale um it's alexcack.redbubble.com i also have a podcast uh sorry for rambling which you can find wherever you get your podcasts and uh and i just interview people that i find interesting um i have interviewed other like viral celebrities i've interviewed like social media influencers like political pundits um musicians reality show contestants nice. um politicians ranging from like the local level to like congressional candidates um i've done I just recently went did like a whole series where I was just interviewing like every third party presidential candidate because there's a gazillion this year. So um, you can find all of those right now. Um, those are available, like I said, anywhere you anywhere you want to listen to a podcast, you can find it. Awesome. Yeah, so we'll we'll wrap it up there. I know we have you have places to go. <laughs> and um, thank you so much for being a guest on the show. And I want to thank each and every one of you guys for watching and for listening. I want to thank today's sponsor. And I want to thank Zaphire for doing the intro and outro music to Seasons 2 episodes. So yeah, I hope you guys have a super special awesome day. And bye.